please take your seats. One is that you have to have been registered by current 
which means you are entitled to use the title of engineer. So everybody that you see here today in the gown or who's been inducted is engineer. So I'm, from now on, I'm going to use that title. The other condition, of course, is that, and this that when we engineer, it's called necessary conditions. If you would have been a fellow of either the Nigerian Society of Engineers or any other acceptable society of engineering. So, necessary conditions, but they are not sufficient. Engineer. So, Professor. Engineer, Professor. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to say engineer anymore. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The presidents of academies that are here present with us, we are waiting for our special guest who has promised to be here. Uh, presidents of uh, other stakeholder uh, organizations of engineering, the president of Korean, the president of MSC, past presidents of the Academy, distinguished pres uh, fellows of the Academy, distinguished guests, gentlemen, gentlemen of, of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy, and I hope you can follow uh, from the PowerPoint. I'm delighted to welcome all of you who have traveled far and near to honor us at the Nigerian Academy of Engineering program lined up today. I thank God Almighty for this great day. I hereby assure you all that the chain of events lined up for today will be worthwhile for your time and efforts in sharing with us our celebration today. Please join me, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome in a few minutes our special guest, who will be introduced later on. He is the chairman, that is uh, Senator B. E. Grojai, MMI, JP, chairman of the board, Nigerian Communications Commission. I'm delighted to see other dignitaries that have gathered here today. And I think some are unusually late because they assume that many organizations don't start on time. We want to be remembered that we start on time. And I repeat, we want to be remembered that we start on time. We want people to take time seriously. That because time waits for no man. So, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I strongly believe that we should use this occasion to remind us that our responsibility at the Nigerian Academy of Engineering is to ensure the advancement of engineering education and the practice throughout the engineering family. And that is engineering technology, technicians, and craftsmen. This can be achieved or achievable through continuous learning, advocacy, and strategic collaboration with relevant professional associations, government, and industry. The goal remains the same and significant in the improvement of the lives of our people and the state of our society, the nation and in humanity as a whole. It is being stated that engineering and technology help to enhance the development in every aspect of human endeavor. We are determined to continue the tradition of information dissemination and exchange of ideas among ourselves and other professionals. And we ask to advise, as advisors to both government and private sector operators of engineering technology and other related matters. Indeed, 
we have to be proactive by assessing emerging social economic challenges in the country as we relate to engineering and technology, anticipating the likely need to meet standards. Where are the new fellows? Please count number three of these. They are all my friends. Where is number two? So, number two is my Number two is from a very near asset. That is from Balogun. Dr. Balogun is in Europe uh, for treatment. So, he will join us with that. We pray that he will come back alive. Number three, the privilege of listening to a stimulating lecture titled Fueling the Nigerian Economy, State of Domestic Refining and Distribution Facilities. I'm sure you all know that this is a big challenge. I respect the Group Managing Director of NNPC to join us. He is one of those being adopted. I was called now that it was time. Is he actually coming? Yeah, okay. I thought you should not say your property call to the GP until you are inducted here. You are welcome, engineer. Man. So, can you come for me? <laughs> so, we know the challenges and we want those in charge to face these challenges and make a difference. Is the only way we will live happily? Is the only way we will know that engineering and technology will be making a difference. The lecture is going to be delivered by engineer Kaladu Oyegeji Razak Oladini. Is Razak is the same thing as Rasaki in my own. So you shall know. And is Kaladu is the same one that I shot into Kala in my own. So Oladini, how did you steal my name? Are you there? You, are, you didn't steal it because you are younger than me. So, okay. So, can we clap for him? I wish to bring up your, to your attention some of the initiatives of the academy that we have embarked upon during the last one year of my time as your president. Last year, at the International Council of Academies of Engineering and Technology, Technological Sciences, KIT, Annual conference in Montevideo, Uruguay. The academy reached out to me to become a member of this association. This was a process that has been nourished since uh, 2013, when Professor Obini was the president, followed by Professor Arai Salau, and followed by Madam Academy, Engineer Mrs. Maduka. Can we clap for all of them? They have visited well, and the assessment is very good. So we are going to be going to Sweden next week to formalize this membership. Myself and other executive members will be representing you at the program. So can you use us well? The Academy has developed templates. Uh, I wanted to mention the three people who came. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ruth uh, David was the first. We had the president of the Academy of uh, Engineering in, in Uruguay and the president of the Academy of Engineering of South Africa. So the three of them came and interacted with all of us. The Academy has developed templates for development of outcome-based engineering curriculum for the whole of engineering family. The engineer, the technologist, the technician, and the tradesman. On the basis of the Washington, Dublin, and Sydney academies, adoption of these will enable Nigerian engineering graduates meet global standards, and our engineers will be able to work globally. The academy recently featured a forum on two topics suitability, solid linear development and value addition chain who values Nigeria. This was delivered by engineer Professor John Adiagai, who is also a fellow of this academy. And the second one is the way forward for the iron and steel industry in Nigeria, presented by engineer Professor Dewey Adiagai 
also a fellow of our academy. The challenges and solutions to the Adiakuta Steel Company Limited in Kogi State, which are going on the all of details, became a critical outcome of this forum. The academy knows the importance of this critical exist, uh, extensive multidimensional facility to the national economic development and in the engineering community. Hence, the academy is working with various stakeholders in the sector to provide solutions and advice to the federal government to resuscitate the, uh, this extensive facility. Today's lecture is yet another opportunity for the academy to discuss an issue of significance uh, to our country's social economic development. Specifically, and I've told you before the topic, fueling the Nigerian economy, state of domestic refining, and distribution facilities. Our choice of this topic is in furtherance of our avowed commitment to positively impact our economy and the social life of Nigeria. The challenges of the effectiveness of refining impact directly on our lives at all levels. We are in for a clear elucidation of the factors involved today. So please, I urge you to listen carefully. Like our counterparts across the world, the Nigerian Academy of Engineering has limited membership and fellows are nominated on the basis of their distinguished contribution to research and practice of the engineering uh, uh, and the pos po position and are positioned to serve as advisors to government and the private sector alike in engineering and technology matters. Fellows of the academy must be fellows of NSC or equivalent and registered by current or equivalent. Our economy, our academy collaborates with stakeholders to promote creative and analytical technical contribution to our national culture. This is because we remain convinced that our country will be more easily achieved. We easily achieve our national aspirations with more logical and scientific approach to solving identified challenges in most sectors of our economy. We are grateful to our sponsors. The two more to mention here, many companies, organizations that have provided support for our activities. We honored many of them last night at our annual technological dinner. Technology dinner. This evening, ladies and gentlemen, please join me to congratulate the new fellows just to be inducted. I wish to encourage them to be ready to serve the academy in committees and in making themselves available wherever they are called upon to serve the academy in committees and other critical collective assignment. It is through selfish service we can truly make a difference. The older families are also being encouraged to be more committed to the service uh, that confirms our noble existence. The Nigerian Academy of Engineering is ready to continue the pursuit of the great and commendable dreams of our finding fathers. I thank everyone for your love, attention, and patience. Thank you very much.
once you were settled down, you had one of the guests or guests coming. We are still waiting for a special guest of honor. I'm told that the traffic on the Kodobu Road is very, very bad. <laughs> I'm told that the traffic on the Kodobu Road is very bad. So it's um, so it's sort of likely that he may have been held up by the traffic. But our chief host is here today. The chief host is a person who graciously allows us to use this wonderful facility in the University of Lagos. And he's here today to join us, as always. There's only one thing that, uh, unfortunately, he, he's a professor. He's the vice chancellor. But he's not an engineer. But we don't hold that against him. It's a pleasure to invite the vice chancellor of the great University of Lagos, Great Sakakai. Great Sakakai. Great and the greatest and the greatest and the greatest and the greatest. Thank you. Professor Tony Ogunipe, please join us here. We have a seat here for you, by the way. Oh, he's been represented. I have to please. Thank you. 
Mr. President, past presidents, fellows, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you see I was a little bit uh, hazy there. I am a tiny man and uh, I'm not sure to speak anywhere. Anyone sleeping with me, I'll, I'll talk. But that's what I need to come to talk us today. But you see, the guy didn't tell me I was going to do anything. He just said, yeah, I say, you know, so I have to come to the floor. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm asked to introduce the, mm -hmm. the guest speaker. And uh, for, for those of us in the profile, it's on page 19. I'm just going to go through that. Um, it's one of us, and uh, 25 years experience. It's a lot in Nigeria, even though we think uh, a lot need to be given to us. And particularly, in the oil and gas industry. Uh, when you go through that, you see oil and gas in this country is the last where is where we get all the money. We keep on saying we change, we change. Maybe when we go to the next level, the agriculture is still uh, not yet, you know, at the level of the oil sector in terms of the money we get. But firstly, we will be there and uh, even some of us in the oil and gas are wearing into the other sectors. But this is a man who is uh, now an executive partner of African Alliance, manager of Prima Nigeria, private equity, Kipta Alliance Nigeria. And uh, he sits on a number of boards. So really, this is the kind of person we want not only to speak to us, but maybe even to, to sit where it matters, so that this country will, will go to where it's supposed to be. We know that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite the guest speaker. Thank you very much.
And um, this next 25, 30 minutes, we will be looking at a subject feeling the Nigerian economy. I, first of all, will make a confession that this is not by choice. And, um, but most important, the advocacy role that Nigerian Academy of Engineering is set to do is what's driving the presentation that I've been making over the next 25 minutes or so. I will... Yes, this outline, first of all, speaking to what I consider the framework that is creative to fueling the Nigerian economy. We will review the present status of the Nigerian refining and petroleum distribution system built about 1975 and operated, I will say, in very significant level of efficiency over the decade, 1975-1985. We we'll look at the current state as we see it today, review the things that have changed in terms of the factors that drove the creation of the defining and distribution system, and look at which is the way forward, and then we will conclude. It would not be appropriate to speak about this slide without going to take you through the memory lane. The Nigerian economy, uh, the post-war economy in 1974-75, was growing in leaps and bounds, and that drove high consumption of petroleum products, particularly the premium motor spray that is called PMS. And consequently, because there was inadequate local facility to produce, to refine and to distribute, tremendous shortages across the left and the of the nation. Our good fortune at that time was that we had people who had their heads screwed in the right places. I just was beginning my career then, and some of my fathers are here. Um, Shatim Ali Manguru was minister at that time in that little office in Victoria Island. We had people who were at the core of policy making the super palm sex, of which I remember three of them particularly, Alice in Aida, um, Asiodu, and Ahmed Joda, who are the people who crafted a significant portion of whatever the economic policies that drove our country. You had those strong policy makers, and then you had the great, the, the great executors of policies. And I'll mention a few of them. You can't forget the likes of Mario Feide, the father of the families, and the families uh, of Robert Feige, and many of his protégés are here, the vice president who is sitting there in Shinobu and T.M. John. And then I cannot but mention my own mentor teacher, Chief J.J. Apple, who then had responsibility for distribution and distributing to the uh, department system development. So we had the first thing that I have there, strong product demand. We had well thought out sectoral economic development policies that were actually intended to satisfy all the shortages that put across the land and wealth of the country. We had people who competently executed whatever it was that was defined. And many of you will remember in those days uh, that money was not a problem. It was adequate amount of money to execute those things which were then uh, put upon. The outcome was a system that looked like this, where you had um, refineries, although they, they, they were all created in sequence. First, you had the expansion of the 50,000 barrels PHRC to 60. You had the construction of the oil refinery, the cabinet refinery, and subsequently, the new Bodakot refinery that took the capacity to 210,000 barrels a day. But the beauty of it was, given the large expense of Nigeria, trucking just was not going to be the solution. Despite all the different uh, skills, petroleum equalization firms that were put in place to, to make it easy for people to move products, the solution was creating a pipeline and depot system. Um, 
this system, which is listed here, uh, we find multiplicates from a particular refinery to a particular portion of the country. And indeed, this was quite a success because it eliminated, at least for a period of time, the long movement, the long distance movement of petroleum products. Uh, it became much shorter, much more efficient, and saved the country tons of money that was going out in terms of transportation subsidy. Refineries had set targets, some of which are summarized here in terms of sustained capacity utilization, uh, ensuring there was adequate crude oil for all the refineries that were working, optimal yield from the refineries according to set LP programs, which every one of the refineries ran with. And one of the things that was a major attraction at that time, competence building, training of uh, people who manned all, all the facilities over that period. These are issues that are very germane to our discussion today because much of that competence has been destroyed, taken away, and whatever it is that you are looking at for solutions, uh, the non power side of it is something that most people hardly talk about, and it's something that we need to pay attention to. With these things, what we said, kind of give you a background. Let's talk a little bit about the current state of the system and the implication that this has for the domestic petroleum product supply. A lot of the data that I'm going to be showing you over the next couple of slides actually came from LNPC's monthly publications about petroleum products, crude utilization. And have you anyone who looked at the punch a couple of days ago, you have seen their latest, uh, their latest publication. A lot of the data came from the end of 2018 uh, results, which I've used there uh, for this analysis. Speaks tons. I must emphasize here that what we are doing is not playing a blame game. We all are stakeholders and have responsibility to be able to play the advocacy role to make the changes that are needed if we are not going to crash under a system that is not sustainable. I say that again. This is not a blame game. It's one to stimulate every one of us here as stakeholders in this experiment called Nigeria to develop something that is workable, sustainable over time. If you look at the data that's here, you can see for the period 2017, uh, 2017 all the way to the end of last year, you can see the way capacity utilization for the refinery is the way well. In fact, we find, uh, uh, what I mentioned in terms of the fact that we never even did anything last year. Um, but the impact of, the impact of um, non operation is one thing which we'll get to. Those that produced, we spoke about the targets in terms of the yield that you wanted for products. This is the optimal yield that the three refineries were intended to achieve. At least a third of the products coming out of that was the gasoline, which was of significance to the entire economy. And that's the highest value, by the way, if not for the reasons of subsidy. But in terms of what actually was being done, you can see the level of value destruction, not just in terms of non operations of the refinery, but in terms of the output for those ones that are working. In place of 34% gasoline, we are doing very half of that. Um, the products that are really of no use, or not of much use, but are not of no use, you can see a lot of that being in the fuel oil area. And as you look at the consolidated capacity utilization across all the three refineries, you can see the story again the way it has been. What does that mean for us in terms of our ability to produce the gasoline that is needed to feed the Nigerian economy? Massive importation. And one must give credit to the operators of NNPC today. Um, when you look at it in terms of what they are required to do to make sure there is no shortage, you can force them. 
for the policy makers who ought to be able to see the impact of the cost impact of what's being done are the ones that we need to challenge, the ones we need to speak to, and um, some of these things are being done as we, as we go forward. You can observe here the level of petroleum products importation progressively. And most importantly, what you see here, ninety five percent of all that we are consuming actually comes by way of inputs and five percent from from local and tribunals. The programs under which these products are brought in are the offshore processing arrangement and the direct sale, direct purchase arrangements, where we sell products and then we use it from there to use it in the products. Um, in terms of recoveries, you can understand how economically efficient that is. First, because you have lost value. Secondly, when the recovery that comes, you know, the products you bring in are much more costly. And prices at which you're selling them. That's when imports for May 2018. Again, all this data came out of one of publications, and I must give them credit for the degree of transparency that they have shown. Um, if anyone, I, I, I shudder when I look at this, that these guys are really opening themselves up. But understandably, because the responsibility for shipping policy uh, in terms of efficiency in the economy, the economics of what they are doing probably doesn't run on the desk. Um, one of the first things that I observed analyzing this was that if we are optimizing, I understand the danger of optimizing in a single point, right? But this is probably the largest portion that we can work with. But today, if we are to optimize on delivering the gasoline that is required to fit this country, based on the data for 2018, we are going to be able to refine over $700,000 of oil a day. That has a very important bearing on the hopes that people have placed on what that particular refinery will do. That particular refinery, main place is $500,000 a day. Uh, if we tweak it as sustainable possible, we probably will get to like 600, 650, which is not a shortfall. So let people not think that we are done with the disease of it. The basic data shows that we need to be refining more if we are going to be looking to satisfy those new requirements. But against that, what's assigned to the local refineries in terms of the crude to use? is a order of $410,000 a day. And um, I was sharing this with one of my colleagues. Um, even the $300,000 a day, I didn't get to the refineries. It appears that the preference is about go the DSDPA and go with the inputs. Um, I understand uh, from discussions with some of the colleagues that if you go to my group for money for two days, no one in the world is even operating on the basis of food supply for two days. It's, it's just, it doesn't even make sense. Look at our analysis of what this means. Of, um, between February 2018 2019, the first line there gives you the average oil production of the country. Our uh, food joint venture is about 613, and the, gov the federal government share is just $350,000 a day on the JV side. That's roughly what you are giving to the refineries to, to produce. It's your low, lowest crude, crude oil. That's why you will get the, get the maximum in terms of your tax revenues and so on. And that's what you are giving up to the refined locally. Um, basically, that's really the only way. But again, that's just a better point in terms of the split of um, what is refined locally, what goes to DSP, is the same order of 93% to 7%. So, seeing where we are today, at the crude oil price of $65 to $1 a barrel, the estimated number of to gas to be is $135 a liter. I will pay the whole of $45. Nobody likes to talk about subsidies. We call it under recovery, politically correct, right? So, 
in terms of the bleeding that comes from this alone, but the calculations that we made on publications from leaves, you will find that in the five year period, uh, from four years to the 2015, roughly 1.8 trillion by that calculation was the government's own result of 1.2 trillion in terms of all the recoveries in that area here. I will emphasize my points. This is not a blame game. It's just a lively lot of us to see what the issues are at a time when we are significantly constrained for what they are. We have been raised this, we have been bring things back to improve all the infrastructure issues that we have as a nation. This is the one that took the breath out of me. Uh, again, this is NNPC's data. Well, um, that's not from the other side. We find out that we are able to run 5% of the time, to produce only 5% of our production of what we need in the country. We are putting surplus, but you see listed here. Negative except for that month of April, put all of that together. The refineries for non performance consumed 120 billion naira in one year. I do not know um, where the efficiency is and where people are talking about uh, the strength stretched for money. But that is 120 billion, is part of the 1.3 trillion that's in the body's best. But we need to think again as to how we prepare resources. Particularly in a sector that is so volatile, that's left crucial to the growth of our nation's economy. So, seeing the situation that we have today, um, the pipeline system, we also have, uh, we've talked about the refineries, pipeline system, some of them are available in our team. Understandably, we know why this one is not our team because the refinery is not producing. Um, we believe, yes, occasionally we are for the producers, but the level of organization that you see across the pipeline system is not to be designed. Uh, but the public depots largely are active, but what there are no products to put in the depots, we are not sitting here. What I'm trying to let us see is that all the things, the investments that have been made on the back of sound um, decisions made by the policy makers of old, they mm -hmm. either have been degraded or they are just lying waste. And the people are spending tons of money building products into the country. This is what we do. I think this gives you a very quick overview of the level of modernization that is suffered by uh, the different pipeline systems that are working at Mosini. This is what you see on the most by one basis. Uh, Kaduna, Antwerkop, Uri, Zambiaria. And in essence, um, uh, it, it's the level of poverty or lack that causes people to go cut pipelines and get products out. These are issues that we face with. Issues that the nation hardly has the money to be able to fix as long as we decide to keep these things in our control. So, um, we've spoken about the critical factors that led to the development of the system. We've reviewed very quickly the system as it exists today, based on the data that came from the NPC. The next section is what I will call one of the factors that probably has changed. And in looking at that, going back to those three circles, which I want to use as a hand in policy education and funding, uh, is that a strong product demand? Big question. Most of you are not in the position of having enough gradients in concentration across a particular field, across a number, you will see a few to try and get to it in a quick way. You find the prices across a number are significantly higher than what we are paying here. Whether you are angels or women or brother, it's a natural affair. It will, people will take advantage of that gradient in prices. And we will show that later on. Uh, do we have strong sexual economic development policies? 
that actually build power by the sky value, I leave that to you to judge. Education, I leave that to you to judge. And in terms of funding, I also leave that to you to judge. I've been mean, in the financial, the financial business over the last 20 years of my career. Um, I know that this country gets better and better every single day. In terms of what it earns, we pay a lot of money. There are too many months that buy less than the same in the piece of money. And these are the things that I believe we need to look at again as an academy. And put the numbers where they are and address the issues to those who need to hear. We cannot do that. Because the system, as we see today, is not sustainable. At some point, it will crash. And um, my chairman said yesterday at the dinner, and I think he said yesterday at the dinner, that we are looking to 70 year olds as young people who are coming behind. But there are much younger people behind us, and if this thing crashes, we have a lot of things to lose. Um, so these three key factors, particularly the lack of funding, I believe is what has driven um, the changes that we are seeing today. In fact, I will show two examples to just two case studies uh, to, to reflect what I'm trying to show. Uh, the much spoken about bandwidth refinery, and the less known of Bono refinery, which is probably the only and little refinery that is standing today, um, one which will actively involved in the form of the management. Um, Bandwidth refinery. Thank you. 
sure that there are many people here today who will be wondering, having given us all this bad news, is there any good news? But it tells me that yes, there is, provided there is the political will to do what is required. That political will is what we, as an academy, will try to ensure that we can get across the government and ensure that the right things are done. We have a very important guest here today. Um, you know, when you go along the road and you see all those policemen in their uniforms day and night, come rain, come shine, and they tell you that the police is your friend, it's actually true. Because we have here today the DPO of the Sabo Police Station. He was invited because he is an important member of this community. And I'm sure that, oh, the DVC has gone, but I'm sure that between the DVC and himself, they probably have a very good relationship to ensure that he keeps the peace. Uh, we have GSP John Nane today. He is representing the best. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. I'm told that very soon our special guest of honor will be here. Chief Gilgay, is he here yet? But I'm sure, I'm told that you won't believe it, but it is actually really that what I'm told. Uh, <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, well, you know, we've been here since for a while, so it wasn't really when I came. But I have really. So he still delayed, but he is on his way. He sent us a text message now that he is coming. But in order not to keep you waiting, we will go to the next stage of the of the uh, today's event. As indicated by the president during his opening welcome address, today we have the great honor of recognizing three of our fellows who have achieved another milestone in their engineering career. These are gentlemen who have attained the age of 75 and who are fellows of the academy. Now you may wonder why 75. I believe the president alluded to this yesterday, thinks that anybody who's over 75 deserves the honor that anybody else 75 is young. Well, there are some of us who don't who the better 75, but we don't feel so young these days. So it's my pleasure to invite, first of all, a man whom I also hold in very high esteem, engineer Professor Adeyemi, to please come up to be invested with a lifetime award. Professor Adeyemi, please. Professor Adeyemi's CV is in the brochure. It's going to come up here very soon as soon as. Is there an engineer in the house who can get this into work? And I'm going to hand over the microphone to 
our president, Professor Samala Sisi. He has excelled at another level before he became a fellow of this academy because he has done very well. Yesterday I was mentioning that it will be a surprise to many that this young looking old man <laughs> became a vice chancellor 30 years ago. Thank you clap for him. He, he was the second vice chancellor in MENA, Federal University of Technology, MENA. But incidentally, he's my good friend. But that's not why he's here. It's because he has done well. And I was telling somebody, I met him on the campus of the University of Wisconsin in 1973. And I looked at him, I said, ah, this fellow, it must be somebody that is probably from Nigeria. So I called him. I said, who are, what's your name? Then he said, Suleiman, I love to get it. Eh, you must be a Nigerian. <laughs> In which department are you? He said, civil engineering. I said, ah, I have an office there. I'm in civil engineering, I'm in agricultural engineering. I keep telling people I'm a hybrid. So we went there, and his office is right next door to me. And I didn't know. So we became friends since then. You are welcome to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be giving you an award for this. And uh, I congratulate you for it. I told you yesterday that you have brought your wife. His wife is professor of management at University of Milan. Can you clap for his wife? Congratulations. you feel. But don't spend too much time going to the wrong places. <laughs> Come. Professor Bajoga, you are welcome. I used to be a sectional examiner <laughs> at uh, ABU in the Department of Civil Engineering. He graduated two years after me, 
uh, had that we became a uh, PhD around the same year. Some of us uh, meandered the way. I thought I didn't want to be an academic professor. Well, some said, you must be one. Professor, uh, some here said, you cannot run away. Uh, can you clap for those two people? <laughs> <laughs> so, Professor Buba Bajuga is a very consummate person. A few years back, he was not coming here, so I went to Abuja, I went to eat in his house, and told his wife, who is here with us, Madam, where are you? Abuja, stand up, we want to see you. You gave me food in Abuja, and I did not forget. So, I said, you must be coming. So, we are feeling, as I have done earlier, that he should be coming. He has trained many professors. He has done very well. He's a vice chancellor in Bauchi, and he did. He left a good record there, and he has trained so many people. So the Nigerian Academy of Engineering respects him, considered him a good person, and made him a fellow. Now we are also telling you, you have become a life fellow. Congratulations. Thank you. 
ఇచ్చినట్లు తెలుసా
Maybe that that interesting. Many of you have wanted to see ministers. You never see them. <laughs> and now I'm shaking my hand with him. And they are going to again. Hey, don't go yet. Don't go yet. Thank you, Lady Wang. You might go back. Yeah.
If I did that, wouldn't I be in trouble? Do more of that. But the power confirmed on me as president has suddenly admit you as a fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Jane Tandy. Jane Tandy, this is the second generation of my own students. A supervisor was my student. <laughs> Professor Bilowo supervised his PhD. Incidentally, Professor Bilowo is new buried today. May his gentle soul rest in peace. He was he supervised me, and he was my, a second set of my students at IFE. So, uh, can you clap for me? <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. President.
we became managing director of National Engineering and Technical Company, Lefto, in 2016, and we positioned Lefto, charting a start of sustainable growth by the time we left in 2018. Engineer Siku Adorabe Ali is a chartered engineer and a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, the Institution of Chemical Engineers in the UK, and the Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers of which he has been a member of council. He is an alumnus of EC Business School and Abad. And he alumnus works as an independent energy consultant. Mr. President, I present to you engineer Siku Amiri for induction as fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineers. I, Engineer Siki Adewali Aminu, hereby pledge to uphold the Code of Conduct, Statutes, and Bylaws of Nigerian Academy of Engineering. I also pledge to contribute to the advancement of knowledge and promotion of excellence in engineering to the best of my ability. May I please invite the spouse, Mrs. Alimi, to please come up. Thank you. By the power of the power of the family of president, our family of which you are founder of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Grassroots refineries, 
moves to the final cross, cross, cross cutters heavily reformers the final expansions revolves the battle method by force development and deployment and co-generation power plants. The Nanyakanyoku's career has been accentuated with several significant professional achievements and awards. He is fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers and of the Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers. He served as a member of the board of several organizations. Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Cardinal Refining and Petrochemical Company, Petrochemical Refining Company, Indorama LMS Petrochemicals Company Limited, Hyson Carson Limited, and who also served a member of it in what they call the Good Governance Forum. In Nairobi, was an honorary, was, was an honorary advisor on petroleum to the Anambra State Government. Mr. President, sir, I present to you, Engineer Eloche Ayoko, for decoration and induction as a fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Nepal, with Nepal, 
acephalate power station where he was to become principal engineer. He was subsequently deployed to every station where he was to become chief engineer, plant manager in 1999. Among his many cost savings and performance improvement schemes is his pioneering of the 3070 Original Equipment Manufacturing OEM Local Personnel Turnaround for EGI, which became the foundation for the proposed National Electricity Service Company to support power plants locally and regionally. He became pioneer project manager generation for development of five national integrated power projects, NIPP, green fuel power stations in the year 2006. Engineer Atakuli was in 2008 appointed to the transition board to oversee the commercialization of power holding company of Nigeria. HCM. After retirement in 2009, he became a consultant to the power sector, consulting for departments for international development, BFID of UK in 2010, and more recently in 2017 for the World Bank supporting the power sector recovery plan and the Nigeria electrification project. He has published many papers in power generation, management and policy. Engineer Atakumi Atakali is a fellow Atakumi, sorry, is a fellow of both the Nigerian Society of Engineers and the Institution of Mechanical Engineers. Mr. President, sir, I present to you Engineer Simeon Atakonu for induction as Fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineers. by pledge to uphold the code of conduct, statutes, and bylaws of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. I also pledge to contribute to the advancement of knowledge and promotion of excellence in engineering to the best of my ability. May I please invite Mrs. Atakumi, please, to come forward. Is she around? Oh, okay. Thank you. Binding power. of me as president, I formally admit you as a fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Congratulations. My pleasure now to invite Engineer Dr. Samuel Ayakora.
Mr. President, are we ready? Okay. Engineer Samuel Nemeka Ayakora graduated with BTEC, first class honors, chemical engineering at the Loughborough University of Technology, UK, in 1968. and with a PhD in 1971. He was the best student award, he won the best student award in the Department of Chemical Engineering at Logbo in 1966. <clears throat> and award for the best student's paper published in the college journal by the Midlands branch of the Institution of Chemical Engineering in 1968. His PhD thesis, Malfunction of Process Instruments and its Detection Using Process Control Computer is well referenced and published in a book, The Human Operator in Process Control by Taylor and Francis Limited. Engineer Yakoa worked in Dunlop, Nigeria PLC from October 1971 and retired as the first Nigerian director of tire manufacturing. He was responsible for the successful execution of the modernization and expansion of car radial tire production project that launched Dunlop Elite Tires. He ventured into manufacturing after retirement as the premier managing director of Vital Gases Limited Otter from where he retired, I hope finally, in 2004. The company was established to produce industrial and medical grade oxygen. It also blended chemtain 2 gas as a superior and safer alternative to oxyacetylene gas. Engineer Ayankora is the past president of the Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers and remains an active council member. Mr. President, sir, I present to you Engineer Samuel Ayankora for induction as fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineers. Congratulations. I wanted to say something. You are never too old to be honored. We are honoring him, even though he's over 75, but he has done well. Can you clap for him? I, engineer Dr. Samuel Nemeka Nakora, Hereby pledge to uphold the code of conduct, statutes, and bylaws of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. I also pledge to contribute to the advancement of knowledge and promotion of excellence in engineering to the best of my ability. Is Mr. Sanya Kora around, please? Oh, okay. Thank you. Before I invite the next inductee, uh, one of our guests would like to leave, but there are two cars that are blocking him. The cars are parked at the Faculty of Arts, 
and there are Honda Pilot FST 915 FD and Toyota Sequoia KRD 941 DH. So if the owners are here, can you please go to move your cars so that the guests can leave. Thank you. And before I confer on me as president, I formally admit you as fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Congratulations. Kanti Kachala Baru. My President, Engineer Doctor. They can see Kachala Baru graduated first class honors in mechanical engineering <laughs> from Ahmadi Bello University, Zaria, in 1982. He obtained a PhD in computer aided engineering from University of Sussex in 1987. He started his career with Just Steel Rolling Company Limited in 1988 and subsequently joined NNPC in May 1991 as engineering manager with NETCO. Thereafter, he held various positions in NNPC, leading to executive director of operations Nigeria Gas Company in 1999. Dr. Baru was appointed group executive director of exploration and production in 2015 as well as technical advisor on gas matters to the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources in 2016. He was in July 2016 appointed Group Managing Director of NNPC. <laughs> As GMD of NNPC, Dr. Baru has launched initiatives which have restored confidence of investors in the Nigerian oil and gas industry, attracting huge amount of financing for upstream and gas infrastructures. He is also transiting NNPC from, to an energy company with initi initiatives on renewable energy. That gentleman is a recipient of Forbes African Oil and Gas Industry Man of the Year 2017. The Zeke Prize for Professional Leadership 2018. And the Nigerian Gas Association's Gas Person of the Year 2018. He is a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers a fellow Nigerian Institution of Mechanical Engineers and a fellow Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers. Mr. President, I present to you engineer, Dr. Mekanti Kachala Baru for induction as fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Before, before you sign, I want to say one or two things. The group managing director of NNPC has been accessible to the academy. And we are not honoring him because he was accessible to us, so that he didn't bribe us. You can see from his CV that he's an excellent engineer, first class degree. He has a PhD. He actually ran away from Baoshi. 
You will know that I know. He was to be an academic. He started giving lectures and ran away. <laughs> so he's telling me now, at 60, he will go back and we will welcome him. <laughs> Congratulations. By the power conferred on me as president, I formally admit you as a fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I am done now. My name is Engineer Titi Omoejo. Thank you very much. This way, um, he just announced to us that he's retiring on the 7th of July. That is the date of birth. Congratulations. Uh, before I make the next announcement, uh, uh, number one is that the URL for live streaming is actually ne-live, L-I-V-E, dot G-A, not line. I had announced my voice, actually ne-live, dot G-A. So, please remind your relatives and friends that you can watch. I've, I've just logged in myself, so I know it's working. Thank you. Now, the next inductee is one whom I'm very proud to invite, because we come from the same town. Yes, Bragging Wright. Engineer Dr. Oyenuga Eribake. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present or to read the 
citation of Dr. Engineer Dr. Yunuga Aribeke. I am excited because he is or was my mentor in the sector. Engineer Dr. Yunuga Aribeke graduated with first class honors in mechanical engineering in 1971 from a prestigious university, University of Lagos. As a pioneer shell scholar, he obtained a PhD in structural engineering in 1978 from the University of Sussex. He started his career at Shell in 1971 and had brief stint with the University of Sussex and NMPC before joining Delta Steel Company in 1979 where he rose from assistant chief engineer to acting deputy general manager. He later joined BBC Brown Boring, Lagos, as manager power generation. His dedication and hard work at BBC Brown Boring, now ADP, and in rapid promotions, leading to his appointment as a director of ADB, Electrical System Limited. Engineer Dr. Arubeke was appointed Managing Director, Country Manager of ADB, Aston, Aston Power, in 1999, and later in 2001, became Managing Director, Country President, Aston, on ADB. Investment. He established and nurtured Alton Nigeria Limited until he retired in 2008. He has served in non executive capacity on various boards, including Arabia T and D, Nigeria Limited, and Micron Tables and Wires Limited. He is currently the chairman of ABP Nigeria Limited. Dr. Hidake currently works as a private consultant on power. He is a fellow of Nigerian Center of Engineers, a member of Nigerian Institute of Structural Engineers. Like I said before, he mentored so many engineers in the okay, in KCM. Mr. President, sir, I present to you Dr. Oyemuga Arebeke for induction as a fellow of Nigerian Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Before you sign, <laughs> Some people don't know the meaning of Iribake. I think it's important that you know, because in our tradition, you look at the house and the family before you give any name. His name is Oyemuga Iribake. Congratulations. Mr. President, in the spouse of Dr. Iribake Sayan, can he join us? platform. His wife. I, engineer, doctor, Oyenuga, everybody, hereby pledge to uphold the code of conduct, statutes, and bylaws of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. I also pledge to contribute to the advancement of knowledge and promotion of excellence in engineering to the best of my ability. Congratulations. 
By the power conferred on me as president, I formally admit you as fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Congratulations. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, no, sir. Yes, sir. My countryman, alumnus of Rivers of Lagos, he can't lose. <laughs> yes. It has given me pleasure to invite engineer Professor Samuel Tunji Ibiemi. Professor Tunji Samuel Ibiemi obtained the Council of Engineering Institutions CIE UK Part 2, equivalent to bachelor degree in UK in, e in electronics engineering from Cambridge Institute of Technology, Cambridge UK, and MSc and PhD degrees in electrical engineering, computer and control in 1980 and 1982 respectively from the University of Bradford, UK. He became a full professor of electrical and electronics engineering, computer and control on 1st October 1997. He has over 36 years university teaching experience and has supervised several masters and PhD students, four of whom are also now full professors. <laughs> Engineer Professor BME has various administrative experiences in the university system from Head of Department at University of Illinois to Dean Provost of College of Science and Technology, Covenant University, and currently as Vice Chancellor at Chivas University, Owo. <laughs> he has been serving on various NU NUC program committees as member, chairman, since 1991. He's a member of the Technical Advisory Committee at National Space Research Development Agency, NASDAQ. Two of Professor BME's inventions were judged by the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, as among the 1,000 world event inventions in 2004 in Japan. <laughs> he is processing five patent applications from his research in biometric signal processing for personal identification and forensic application. Professor BME is a Chartered Engineer UK and a Fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Mr. President, sir, I present to you Engineer Professor Tunji BME for induction as Fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Mrs. Ibiye is here. Could she please join her husband? Thank you. I, Engineer Professor Samuel Tunji Ibiye, hereby pledge to uphold the Code of Conduct 
Statutes and Bylaws of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering, I also pledge to contribute to the advancement of knowledge and promotion of excellence in engineering to the best of my ability. Okay. Congratulations. Uh, by the power conferred on me as president, I formally admit you as fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Congratulations. And now we invite engineer Professor Yunusa Alaru Jimo to please come forward. And now we invite engineer Tibia Okiola Akaku. Engineer Professor Yusa Alao Jimo holds first and higher degrees in civil engineering from Amadou Bello University, Zaria, 1975, and University of Illori, 1987 and 1991. He commenced his career with 30 months construction experience at Julius Berger, Bilfinger, Nigeria Limited, and Alfonso and Cole Ibado. He then moved into academia teaching and researching in civil engineering. A significant research to his credit is the concrete block pavement for remedial works for infrastructure facility on poor soils prevailing in the Niger Delta, commissioned by Shell Western Division in 1990-91. Professor Jimo has supervised a number of higher degree programs and has to his credit a large volume of published works. Besides his roles as departmental head and dean at the University of Illori, he has contributed to resource and institu institutional improvement strategies in highway and pavement engineering and quality assurance, education, and training. He was a member of the review panel for the development of the Nigerian Highway Manual in 2013. Engineer Professor Ibiemi is a recipient of many awards including the 46th NSC Conference Paper Award in 2013 and Research Excellence Award by the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Universities 2016. He is a Fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Civil Engineers and the Nigerian Geotechnical Association. Mr. President, sir, I present to you Engineer Professor Yunusa Jimo for induction as a Fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. This, this is another uh, generation. Professor Adiyemi, can you stand up? I was an uh, excellent examiner in Ilorin in 1974 when civil engineering was started in Ilorin. Professor Adiyemi moved from Zaria to Ilorin 
and these are some of the products. I think you can sleep better. Congratulations. Jimo is here. Could she please come up? Thank you. Congratulations. By the power of convert of me as the president, I confirm you as the friend, I admit you as the friend of Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Congratulations. Yeah. I invite engineer Greg Tomopoulos to come up to be inducted. Graduated as an ASPAU scholar with a Bachelor of Civil Engineering degree with highest distinction from the University of Kansas in June 1975. That's all please. Following his graduation, he joined Stanley Consultants. It was an unlikely pairing a young engineer from Nigeria working for a small engineering firm in a rural Iowa town. From a young engineer to taking on international assignments to becoming vice president and head of the international division. Engineer Thomas Pollard was elected President of the FEN in 1987. <laughs> CEO in 1998, and then Chairman of the Board in 2007. <laughs> Under his leadership, Stanley Consultants became a formidable contender in the global arena. 
The dam was instrumental in bringing electricity to the Philippines, safe water to Egypt through water treatment, helped to restore Kuwait after the Gulf War, and designed a state-of-the-art <laughs> chemical weapons destruction analytical laboratory in Russia. Engineer Thomas Polos was appointed a member of the U.S. State Department's Industrial Advisory Panel, IAP, in 2006. In 2009, he became president of International Federation of Consulting Engineers, FIDIC. He is the first African and the fourth American president of FIDIC in its nearly 100 years history. He retired from Stanley Consultants in 2017. He currently serves as on several non-profit boards, including the Board of Goodwill Industries of Southeast Iowa. Mr. President, sir, I present to you Engineer Greg Tomopoulos for induction as a fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Welcome. He is one of our diaspora <laughs> that comes home regularly. He is from Ukeli. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Congratulations. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you have to rub him now. You have to read, read, read right there. And then we rub it ready. I, Engineer Greg G. Tomopoulos, hereby pledge to uphold the Code of Conduct, Statutes, and Bylaws of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. I also pledge to contribute to the advancement of knowledge and promotion of excellence in engineering to the best of my ability. Congratulations. By the power conferred on me as president, I formally admit you as fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Congratulations. Can I just say that, please don't be alarmed. These are not the many wives of Greg's. <laughs> they are his sisters. Thank you. 
He was said. And another thing, of course, that wasn't said, but which is in his CV, is that he went to one school in. <laughs> Somewhere you gave me, I don't, I don't know where this is. Hey, he has been a member, House of Representatives, discharging his duties as Chairman Committee on Poverty Alleviation, Deputy Chairman, <laughs> Deputy Chairman, Committee on Works, Member, Committee on Power, Member, Committee on Labor and Productivity, Member, Committee on SDGs. Member, Committee on Water Resources, among others. Arebo Engineer Wudil is a fellow and council member of Nigerian Society of Engineers. Mr. President, permit me to publicly appreciate Engineer Wudil for his cooperation and assistance in establishing National Power Training Institute. He did a lot, especially when I come to defend the budget for establishing National Power Training Institute, nothing. He will always put his word to convince his colleagues that power training in the sector must have to have huge provision. He did that, I have not thanked him, but I was given this opportunity to speak about you and I think this is the first time I am publicly appreciating you. Thank you very much for all what you have done. <laughs> Mr. President, sir, I present to you Engineer Mohamed Wudil for induction as a fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Please. If Engineer Woody's wife is around, I was doing my ministry, thank God, him. I, Engineer Honorable Muhammad Ali Udil, hereby pledge to uphold the Code of Conduct, Statute, and Bylaws of the Nigerian Academy. Of engineering. I also pledge to contribute to the advancement of knowledge and promotion of excellence in engineering to the best of my ability. By the power conferred on me, oh, before then we should sign. You see the honorable signing. Some of us have said it will improve their salaries. <laughs> is, he, is he in favor of reducing salaries of honorables? <laughs> the eyes have it. <laughs> that is a national issue. Are we not part of the nation? <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I. By the power uh, conferred on me as president, I formally admit you as fellow of Nigerian Academy of Engineering. Congratulations. <laughs>
as a state engineer would be a good member of the house, knows how to bow properly. <laughs> in fact, man, much practice. Uh, before we continue, and I can see that we are making very good time, and so we won't keep you that much longer. We have three or four more events to do. The first one is that I'm going to invite honorably, sorry, it's not honorable, I'm going to invite engineer Vincent Maduka, who is the chairman of the Board of Trustees, to please help us to give a plaque to our guest speaker. Now you may say he's one of us. Yes, he is, but we feel that it's only right that he should be recognized. As I said, our guest of honor got a taste of Lagos traffic coming here today. But then he's a negotiator where he was before he moved back home to Jabugbu. But I'm sure that we are very glad to have him here. Senator Olabi Idojaye is currently the chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission. But before that, he's been chair, he's been in the Senate, he has been in politics and more importantly, he has been a very good friend of the academy. Can I please ask you all to please give him a round of applause? Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can we accept my apology for coming late? It took nearly three hours from Ikeja to uh, uh, this Akoka, Ikeja to Akoka. Just about five miles or three, four miles within the same municipality. So the first challenge to engineers, what do you do to help us control? <laughs> so I think, and the flooding on our roads, one hour of rainfall and five hours of flooding. Something ought to be done about that. Now it is a pleasure for me coming here. Uh, as um, the president said, I'm a friend of this academy through Professor Ayoguye and Tito Etu, who are very close to me. So I come here not so often at your functions. What I have to say today, briefly, is to call to mind what the powerful former head of state of Germany did, and that's Adolf Hitler, before the Second World War, about 1935. He called the your equivalent, the Academy of Engineering of Germany, to go into the laboratory and design for the German people a car that will be economic of fuel, compact, and within easy access of the average German to buy. Within a year or two, the engineers came out with the Bose car, Bose version. Bose car. It was 35 pounds when it was first sold here in Nigeria in the, in the four, late 40s, early 50s, about 35 pounds. It was the miracle, that made, the first miracle God himself performed was engineering miracle. So the German performed the miracle of having the Volkswagen and the other bands, construction of the Bruce, the first highway type of thing that we, is all over the world now, the young perspective. My advice, I'm not the chancellor, but my advice is that you, our brilliant, dedicated, and patriotic members, officers, and members of Academy of Nigeria, should please help Nigeria design new refineries for us, for our petroleum industry, and 
or invite those who will help us finance and contribute to having the world without or refining our two crude, crude products here. It is very unfortunate that we, so blessed by God with so much of uh, mineral resources, we have to export of our crude oil overseas, refine and import. Look at the cost of that to us. We should be able to do the things here. But it appears to be difficult for us to do that. If you engineers put your teeth to it, either by initiating something here and invite others to join you and asking government to contribute where it is necessary, I think we get some good result for that. It is a national vehicle that we are not able to refine our oil. It is a challenge to you, our engineers, and I know you can do it. The rules, too, as I said earlier, construction, community, every area of engineering, we should find a way of central committees to tackle this as national challenges for us. And God will bless and help all of us. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all of you who are awarded today. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now, we are going to have the group photograph of the new inductees with the president, after which I will ask engineer Mekanti Baru to give the vote of thanks on behalf of all the inductees. So, can I ask all the inductees to please come back on stage for a group photograph. Thank you.
engineer McCantivari will now respond on behalf of all the new inductees. Engineer. The President of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering, Engineer Professor Folala Sisi, the Vice President and former Group Executive Director of the NMPC, Engineer Alex Ogedebe, the Chief Host and Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos, Professor Toyin Ogundepe, the Special Guest of Honor, and Chairman, Nigerian Communications Commission, Senator Olabi Dojai, MNI, past presidents of the Academy and the Executive Officers of the Academy, distinguished fellows of the Academy, the guest lecturer, my former boss, and VP of NMPC the Finance and Petrochemicals, Engineer A.O.R. Oladele, F.A.N., Life Achievement Award recipients and fellow inductees, Chief Operating Officers and other top management staff of NMPC are present, Captains of Industry and Distinguished Academy, I also enjoy you, 7th of July. <laughs> Members of the press, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I will start first by bringing the apologies of my wife, who had to travel to support my daughter, who will undergo operations tomorrow morning uh, to deliver a child. And also, uh, congratulations to my fellow RDs. I've been tasked this afternoon to make a few remarks on incubating the next generation of engineers as part of our appreciation to the Academy. I feel honored the Nigerian Academy of Engineering has inducted me as a fellow of the Academy today. Being recognized by the highest professional body of one's calling is perhaps one of the most profoundly delightful honors one can expect in the course of an eventful career. My warmest felicitations go to the Academy for this glory on us. In a similar vein, I also consider it an immeasurable opportunity to be chosen to deliver a remark on behalf of the three life achievement awardees and the 13 new fellows of the, occasion, of the Academy at this occasion. To me, this is an enormous responsibility given the caliber of my RD colleagues. I hope my short remark will meet your expectations. The truth is that all the inducted fellows and RDs of the Life Achievement Award have come a long way. Career-wise, we have all been at the mountaintop as Martin Luther King Jr. would say. <laughs> to have been individually considered deserving of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering's Life Achievement Awards and inducted as new fellows by the highest engineering professional body in the country, we have come, we have seen, and we have conquered, <laughs> as the saying goes. Each one of us has made desirable landmarks 
in our respective engineering careers. In this respect, I will crave your indulgence to highlight the contributions of each of the newly inducted fellows of the engineering profession and indeed humanity, either locally or otherwise. Permit me to start with engineer Suleiman Adamu, who is also the Dambram of Duse. Kazaure, sorry, thanks for the correction. Who is certainly is an alum, alumni, alumnus of my alma mater, the Ahmadi Bell University of Zaria. Engineer Adi, Adamu, and he recently was Minister of Water Resources, have reached public as well as private sector experiences, culminating in my in midwife the Federal Executive Council approved water resources roadmap, water resources being a national water resources policy and the national irrigation and drainage policy for the country. His exploits in the public se sector works also include securing the FEC approval for a national action plan on water, sanitation, and hygiene. Wash. In the case of engineer Mrs. Christiana Oinda Mola, I don't know, who had an extensive private sector work, she had an extensive pri private sector work experience in highway design, contract procurement, and civil engineering management, among others. is also an alumnus of ADU. Zaria too. She has an indelible footprint in her coordination of design and construction of access roads to a building location and flow station, reconstruction of drilling locations, and provision of all civil facilities at the major Delta Petroleum Resources Flow Station. The training and mentoring opportunities she provided for young engineers at the Chad Nigeria Limited are uh, endeavors uh, that we've forever speak for her. Like engineer Mrs. Adeno, engineer Professor Babatunga Adewale Adewumi is a renowned trainer of engineering personnel for industries and the academia, having supervised research projects of over 150 graduates, 15 postgraduate diplomas, 13 masters, MSCs, and seven PhD students. The trailblazing exploits of my former colleague at the NMPC, engineer Siki Aliu, are well known, among which are his champion operational flare reduction initiatives in the Nigerian LNG, where gas flaring dipped from 3.5% to 0.5% of free gas intake, and in the boat making and relating studies for trends 1 to 3 and trends 4 and 5 respectively. His contribution to the bottom line of the National Engineer and Technical Company as Managing Director is our inspiring sustainability boosting the NFTC subsidiaries revenue from 9.3 billion Naira in 2015 to 22.5 billion Naira in 2017. Even as he grew the operating profit of the company from a loss margin position of 68 million Naira in 2015 to a little over 2 billion Naira in 2017. The deep contribution of engineer Samuel Naimeka Anyakora to the private sector in Nigeria is intriguing. Retiring as the first Nigerian di director of the entire manufacturing giant, Dunlop, Nigeria, he was responsible for the successful execution of the modernization and expansion of the car engine car production project of the company, Tad Dunlop Ellis. I can testify to the contribution of yet another colleague of mine at the NNPC, Engineer Onoichi Azubuke Anyaku, 
who retired from the corporation as good executive director of refineries and petrochemicals a few years back. His long time experience in the petroleum industry cuts across the industry value chain, with his notable footprint in the refinery and petrochemical sector and biofuel development and deployment. Currently, he is the erudite president of the Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers, my president. Of course, it is my honor to also recognize the lifelong contribution of Engineer Simeon Odora Atakulu to the power sector in Nigeria. The 1,320 megawatt engine station under his watch in 2005 was the best performing power plant in Nigeria. And in 1999, he was adjunct the best performing generation engineer in the Dupont National Electricity Power Authority, NEPA, providing the much needed support to industries in Lagos, Ogun, and Embarrance. I'd like to recognize engineer Dr. Oenuga Aribike, who also incidentally is from my alma mater during a digital program at the University of Sussex in the UK. Part of the high points of his weekends of engineering work, work life included his distinguished career at the Delta Steel Company, a sector I also served between 1988 and 1991, which saw him rise to the position of that previous general manager in 1993. His training and mentoring of no fewer than 50 engineers and technicians has remained a legacy for his ministerial service. It is in the area of training and mentoring of the next generation of engineers that I will honor engineer Professor Tunji Samuel Ibini, traversing a number of universities. He has supervised no fewer than 16 places, 100 master's degree students in electrical engineering as well as computer science. As for engineer professor Yunusa Jimo, he has also made his mark in the training of our future engineers with the record teaching and research experience in civil engineering of 19 years in the Polytechnic and 18 years in the university sector with emphasis on infrastructure facilities engineering, procurement, maintenance and operations. Engineer Professor Jimo's contribution to resource and institutional improvement strategies with training in highway and pavement engineering and quality assurance in the engineering education and training is well noted and appreciated. Like Engineer Simeon Bioha Atakulu, Honorable Engineer Muhammad Ali Udil made his mark in the power sector of the country before becoming a member of the House in 2007 to voice and defend our noble profession of engineering. He had impacted rural electrification, served as engineer, chief engineer electrical in the Kano State Rural Electricity Board, amongst others. Last, but not by no means the least, is yet another newly inducted fellow of the Academy, Engineer Greg T. Tamophonus. I almost said it's the wrong way, but if you are caught in my industry, I think all of you know the joke. We are told that uh, somebody of his color was adopted by one of the militants. And when they took him to the creek, they fed him Gary, he ate. He fed him dance, he ate. He ate everything that they gave him. They wanted to starve him unless he's eating. So they had to call the boss and say, this is the wrong boy, but he's eating all our food. <laughs> and he's, he's not born here. So, so that's just on the lighter note. It's because your skin color uh, makes you a bit 
looking different from us a little bit. His, his exploits as Stanley Consultants is not worthy, catapulting the company to a new status in respect of reputation, revenue, and profitability. His global play in his career is a reality. We've had designs he's done even to the Russian, to the Russian Federation. For me, I give providence all the gratitude for enabling me choose engineering as my calling over four decades ago. I guess that this view might be shared by my fellow inductees and newly inducted fellows. To say the least, engineering prepared me for life and living. A field that is very and wide, yet relies on the minutest specificity imaginable. A branch of study which tasks our brains within our ability for logical thinking and problem solving. One that challenges our creative instincts to solve essential problems and relieve humanity of drudgery. The engineering profession has many, many of us here great managers of men and material resources, as well as entrepreneurs of note in our respective right. I made bold to say that my engineering background wholesomely prepared me for the strides my organization's management under my program has achieved in the last three years. And which, and which I crave your indulgence to try to swiftly list. Recovering and maintaining production levels well over two million barrels per day, or by prometed low of a little over a million barrels per day of oil and condensate when we came on board in 2016. Also increasing crude oil production by NMPC's flagship offshore company the Nigerian Petroleum Development Company from a mere 65,000 barrels per day to over 300,000 barrels per day production. It also is an ensuring a boost in gas production to the extent that today NMPC is the largest gas supplier to the power sector, tripling our supply to the domestic market from a mere 500 million cent cubic feet per day to over 1,500 million cubic feet per day and we continuously have a rejection of over 300 million cent cubic feet per day from the generating companies because they could not take it and the gas is there. Saving enormous, we also, my organization, saved enormous financial resources through direct sales, direct purchase scheme adopted for product inter import against the also processing agreement OPA with over 1.2 billion savings, billion dollar savings in 2016 alone and an average of about billion dollars every year thereafter. It also helped my organization in reading government of huge financial commitments on cash call commitments by developing workable alternative funding arrangements with the joint venture partners. Also, it helps in devising sustainable work, teamwork between the oil and gas industry and the numerous host communities in the Niger Delta to curb security challenges that had deep crude oil production some years back. It's also restricting a regime of transparent contracting within processes in all our major projects, reducing cost of oil, crude oil production per barrel in the country from the high of $37 per barrel to $32 per barrel with the commitment to drive it further down to $18 per barrel. The engineer profession, the engineering profession had helped 
my organization in exploring opportunities in the frontier business to boost Nigeria's crude oil reserve base and production. Also in sustaining the topic of today, petroleum product supply nationwide. The MMTC is charged as a supplier of last resort. And we have to, and we do, as a matter of our responsibility, ensure that there is no petroleum product scarcity of any kind. And we do that. And the engineering provision had helped the MMTC in undertaking a holistic rehabilitation of nations for refineries to boost capacity utilization. Here, I must emphasize that I know the issues raised in the annual lecture delivered today by my former senior colleague at MMTC, engineer Afolabi Olawale Razak Oladele, on the state of the domestic refining and distribution facilities. The core of my position on the issues raised, however, is that things are, just, are not are usually not as they appear to be. As the Western philosopher Plato noted in his theories, the Republic, Book X. Consequently, the labyrinth of legal legislation, not to talk of the different special interest issues on the finance, may be blurred to a casual observer from a distance. Nevertheless, I would like to put on record the following efforts of NMPC management under my watch that has instituted with a view of enhancing capacity utilization of the assets. On a of Walsh office in July 2016, rehabilitating refineries as well as revamping the pipeline facilities and depots formed one of the 12 business focus areas which NMPC pursued most diligently. Due to the state of the refineries, a lot of rehabilitation is, is required. Where the refinery has to be shut down, full state of the refinery is established, and rejuvenation of the refinery is carried out by required funding, which government both government and MPC did not have. So we set out to approach the targeted allies who remained in funding the activities during 2017. Then we widened our net by approaching our DMPC partners in 2018, who also remained in December. Management's determination to rehabilitate the refiners decided to go to the open market to look for funding in the capital market. This required detailed study that is bankable. NMPC decided to borrow the funds internally to carry out this phase of the study. Accordingly, in March this year, I inaugurated the commencement of the first phase of the rehabilitation of the 210,000 barrels per day capacity potato refinery complex. The project is being executed by Milan based Marion Technimont, SBA, in collaboration with Nigeria affiliate Technimont Nigeria. ENI and NAOC is the NMPC technical advisor for the project. Much earlier, an assumption of office, we had also embarked. Thank you. Uh, okay, I, I, I'll try and round up. Much earlier, an assumption of office, we had also embarked on a large scale rehabilitation of the nation's depots and pipeline facilities, including pump stations across the country. I must confess, however, that the activities of vendors and other economic sectors who breach the operational integrity of these assets has been a perennial challenge and setback. The refineries are strategic national assets on which care must be taken in respect of control. 
Although, as part of the business focus areas, there is the commitment to develop new models for all strategic business units, not the least refineries, that will ensure private sector participation. This is being addressed alongside the rehabilitation of the other assets. So much of some of these perceptions expressed in the lecture. If my training as an engineer could assure the above slide in our system in the last three years, it is my considered view that it behoves on all the newly inducted fellows of the academy, and I try uh, and I to try our best to nurture the next generation of engineers to whom would pass on the button. I am delighted to know that a good number of the newly inducted fellows have in one way or another already involved themselves in training and mentoring engineers of the nature for the future for our country. The message is that we need to intensify our efforts in this respect. This is because at this time and age, no country can compete favorably among the community of nations with a weak science, technology, engineering, and mathematics support bill. Like a good number of the newly inducted fellows, as an individual, I have encouraged the teaching and learning of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in our schools. In Misao, Bochi State, where I hail from, I have in recent years made modest donation of science laboratories and equipment for the benefit of young ones, especially targeting females in collaboration with the Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria. Apple. Similarly, I am proud to say that NNPC as an organization that enthusiastically supports STEM education, the flagship corporate social responsibility program of the NNPC is a science-based national quiz competition organized annually to encourage the study of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics among secondary schools across the country. I feel honored to say that last, last year, we tracked the scheme. We were pleasantly surprised to know that the quantum of scientists, engineers, technologists, and medical doctors, among others, who the scheme, the scheme has produced across the globe. It is also not half chance that NNPs under my watch last year offered support to the inventive building program of Avoyan, aimed at encouraging the girl child to acquire STEM education. The scheme had already been launched with active support of NNPC in the Northeast and South South regions, while plans are put to carry it out in other regions of the country. I have the, the back of my newly inducted fellows that will individually in our respective establishments, encourage the incubation of a new generation of engineers as part of our legacies for a calling that has offered so much of synthesis to many of us. Don't I have your backing? I think I have. I wish to see this opportunity, I wish to see this unique opportunity to thank the management of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering for the confidence reposed in all the newly inducted, inducted fellows of today, pledging that we will endeavor to uphold the values which the Academy stands for. I wish to thank you for your kind attention, and I also invite you for a reception of this. Long live the Nigeria Academy of Engineering, long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria, May Allah bless you all. Thank you. I'm sure that as uh, a fellow of the academy, Engineer Baru will have plenty of opportunity to begin to actualize some of the ideas he has put out today. Thank you very much for your talk. Now, we've come to the end of this event. I thank you all very much for your patience. Uh, a few notes before we leave. I'm going to ask the Vice President to give a word of thanks, after which we will have the procession. 
the procession will go in reverse order. You know, when, when we were coming in, we came in with the fellows in their year of induction. Now we'll go out with the ESCO and the fellows. I guess who comes at the rear end? <laughs> it's the new fellows. Now, um, the fellows and their guests are invited up to the foyer for a reception. And also, I'm informed that NMPC is also having a reception for all the guests of Engineer Baru. So, at this point, thank you for being here. I say God bless you all. Mr. President, I speak on behalf of the Academy of Engineering of Nigeria. My task is a very simple one. It's almost become constitutional for the Vice President. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the University of Lagos, our host, not only for this occasion and many occasions here, but as the for the Secretariat of the Nigeria Academy of Engineering, which is located at the Department of Chemical Engineering. I thank them profusely because every year at this time, they make this auditorium available to us, well furnished and comfortable, and um, we are always grateful for the opportunity. Next, I would like to thank, next I would like to thank all the companies and institutions that have always stood by us to promote us on, this okay, on such occasions. Why do I have to be so thankful? As of today, including the new inductees, we have only 160 fellows of the academy in the 200 million um, Nigerian population. So, and the average age is 66. So it's usually past retirement. So we depend a lot on for our funds from the institutions and uh, those who actually appreciate what we are trying to do. Especially, I'd like to thank NNPC, uh, Corin, and Aqua Petrochemical. The rest of the Promoters are well documented there, and I'd like to thank them for today's, uh, for helping us through today's uh, occasion. Mr. President, permit me to thank the guest of honor for his uh, fatherly advice to us. Not only that, for the challenge we hear from him and from many who attend this occasion every year, engineers must perform. You can also listen to the achievements of the inductees and those who also had a life achievement award. Okay. Not to mention, well, I'll mention it later on, the excellent pre uh, paper that was presented to us today. The only thing I want to add to the guest speaker, the guest lecture, uh, guest, guest of honor. He is a renowned politician, senator, and experienced uh, businessman. If you were listen to the presentation by the guest speaker today, only one thing is missing, the political will. We need the political will. The Academy of Engineering needs to be allowed to present and influence and make impact as engineers in Nigeria. And I will add, it was Archimedes who says, give me a place to stand and I'll move the world. Give the engineers a place to stand, the proper place to stand in Nigeria will make the difference. 
And I can also pledge before all of you today that the Academy of Engineering, in spite of our challenges, uh, we're still determined to make the effort to meet with institutions and government across the board to Im Im implant on them the idea that engineering can make a lot of, the engineering and technology can make a lot of difference to this country. Uh, I'd like to thank also the guest speaker for really bringing the story home. Uh, we are all in the oil industry together, and he has done an excellent job of presentation today. I would also like to thank the families of the new inductees. I'm sure it's a very unique occasion for them, especially towards the, this, this end of their careers and lives. I, I celebrate with them and I thank them for coming to join us today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there are many friends, relatives, the press who are interested in what happened today. I thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, I took the permission of Mr. President to refer to a point made by the gentleman, the engineer who spoke, <coughs> or the vice president I had, who thanked all of us, including myself. Then he talked about political will. <coughs> and there are no local standard at Calcum over Moreno. Give me a place to stand and I will move the world. Let me say, at my own level, and I hope people have on my side the political hierarchy of this country, we really when we live when we get the result of what we are doing. I have confidence in the engineering uh, industry and profession. To the extent that one of you I personally invited got my board to invite him, and that is a uh, and no, the engineer and uh, and Nelson Lukwe to head the committee and invited engineer Titi Omitu to be with him and Professor what is the debate from Kano? No, no, uh, no, not that matter. It doesn't matter. It's my other person. Yeah. Anyway, there's about six eggheads, mostly engineers, to design for us a test whereby we can pick those potential Bill Gates of Nigeria. Nigerians who have all the intellect and the brilliance of Bill Gates and Zuckerberg, those who can invent things in this international revolution going on in the world. We need to find them out, finance their education, and let them perform. So Nigeria will have a key place to not just borrow us, or followers, but in the advance, right ahead in the world in this race of top revolution, industrial revolution. And Titi Ometu is here. We invite him to be, apart from taking part in that exercise, we have invited him to be the chairman of the board of the DBI to chair and he says the witness. So that at our own level, I'm able to do that. I'm sure people heard of myself in the political hierarchy of this country. Recognizing what we can do, we certainly be able to help. In the end, we find Nigeria swearing, and it will happen. It is the use we want to catch them young. It's up to you, Ejia, to uh, to, to show to your people that we are doing something along that line. Thank you very much indeed. The ceremony is now called to order. Can we have and I've said the we shall please ask everybody to be upstanding whilst the procession takes place. 